Hi, and welcome to another exciting episode of Poltex Tech Lightning. One of the many designs decisions an Azure Architect face pertains to a next generation firewall. This is a key component in every Azure landing zone, and it's absolutely critical to have an in-depth understanding. You will need to have a strong understanding of certain terminology and concepts when you dive into this topic. This video is all about these concepts, terminology, and how it applies to the Azure Firewall. So let's get started and dig into it now. We do have some exciting terminology to explain in this session. First off, we need to understand the difference between a stateless and a stateful firewall. Stateful firewalls, they're considered intelligent firewalls, which can base future filtering decisions on what has happened in the past compared to the present. One major component here in play is IDPS, Intrusion Detection Prevention System. Let's say you want to have an FTP server to be accessible publicly from the internet. You open up port 21 on the firewall and everything is fine. If a malicious user decides to brute force through your FTP server, a stateful firewall can detect this. Based on the configuration, it can then alert and or block the traffic attempts. As you can imagine, for a stateful firewall, you always need to keep its software up to date. In addition to this, the system requires a lot of extra resources as it's analyzing traffic in real time and taking critical decisions. A stateless firewall is another type of firewall. This one does not inspect traffic, it just determines if the security rules are met and then allow or denies. You do require more configuration as every action has to be defined in the firewall itself. In the previous example of a brute force attack through a stateful firewall, a stateless firewall would not care about this. It would only map each connection to an existing rule, allow or deny. Stateless firewalls, they may be enough on the inside when they are used for traffic between corporate networks. Azure Firewall is fully stateful with two different SKUs. You have the standard and the premium. The premium version, it adds a lot of capabilities such as IDPS, TLS inspection, URL filtering and more. So this brings us to an interesting question. Are Azure Network Security Groups, NSGs, stateful or stateless? At first look, it may seem they are stateless, but in fact they are stateful. So when you open an incoming port to a virtual machine, the outgoing port will automatically be opened to allow the traffic. In an NSG, you only need to open the incoming port and the reply is automatically allowed. This then falls under the category of stateful. Next up in the terminology list is SNAT and DNAT. SNAT stands for Source Network Address Translation and is used when an internal, private host needs to initiate a connection to an external, public host. When an internal host tries to connect to a host on the internet, the request goes to the firewall. The firewall, for example Azure Firewall, replaces the source IP address with its own public IP. It then sends the packet on to the internet host. The internet host sees that the packets come from the public IP of the Azure Firewall and sends the request back there. By default, the Azure Firewall performs SNET on all IP addresses except the official private ranges such as the 10, 172 and 192 range. You can manually configure ranges to avoid SNET or disable SNET altogether in the Azure Firewall. If you disable SNET, the Azure Firewall, in the previous firewall example we saw, it would not send a public IP address to the host on the internet. The host on the internet would try to reply to the IP address that the internal or private host has that sent the request. DNAT stands for Destination Network Address Translation and is used when an external internet host wants to connect to your internal private host. It works in the opposite direction compared to SNET. External connections to the firewall are translated to the private IP addresses and port of an internal host. Next concept we'll talk about is force tunneling. Force tunneling with Azure Firewall is the concept of routing all internet bound traffic to a designated next hop instead of the public internet. This is useful if you want all outbound internet traffic from Azure to use an existing internet breakout on-premise. You have to keep in mind that force tunneling has to be configured at the creation of the Azure Firewall. 
it creates an extra subnet called the Azure Firewall Manager, which it uses for its operations. Once the Azure Firewall is configured in this mode, you cannot undo it and you will have to recreate the resource. Keep this in mind as it's an important design decision. Do you require to use an existing next hop internet breakout for traffic from Azure to the Azure Firewall? Then you have to configure it in the force tunneling mode. So let's have a look at the different versions and SKUs of the Azure Firewall. We have the Azure Firewall Standard and the Azure Firewall Premium. One month of standard, one terabyte of data is about $930 a month. One month of premium, one terabyte data is about $1,300 a month, month. So what do you get for the extra $370 per month with the premium version? Well, we have TLS inspection. It decrypts outbound traffic, processes the data, then encrypts it and sends it on to the destination. We have IDPS, Intrusion Detection and Prevention System, which is an intelligent way of monitoring report and blocking network activities. You have URL filtering. You can decide which URLs should be accessible from the firewall. You have web categories. This is where you can actually quickly allow or deny access to certain categories of website. Example, you can block all access to gambling sites. Now, that was interesting information. You should now be able to understand the concept of a firewall in Azure. Remember these key points. Azure Firewall and Network Security Groups are stateful. SNAT or SNET are for internal host initiating connections to external. DNET are for external machines initiating connections to your internal hosts. Azure Firewall has to be in the force tunneling mode if you want to use an existing next hop existing internet breakout. Azure Firewall in force tunneling mode cannot be switched off. You have to recreate the resource. That's all I had on offer for this episode of Podtech Lightning. Until next time, take care. See you.